Yeah, yeah, sure. Yes, let's start. So welcome, everyone. I'm very glad you're joining us today. Together with Tim Wildeboer, who's also here. Please wave, Tim. Uh, we are advisors of the uh, media advisors at the Creative Europe Desk Canal. And together with uh, the Creative Europe Desk to Luxembourg and Kaboom Animation Festival, we initiated this session. Uh, so this is your chance to get to know some very high quality training initiatives in Europe that are focused on animation industry and get to know what they can offer you. Um, we should have enough time for questions in between the presentation, so please feel free to do so. You can do this by raising your hand. Um, if you don't know how to do it, you can click on participants be uh, on the uh, below your screen. And then you see on the right hand side, you see the possibility to raise your hand. Uh, otherwise, you can also uh, click on the chat and if you want to uh, write your question, that's fine as well. Uh, Tim and I will keep an eye on that. Um, so before we get started, I would also like to give the virtual mic to Martin. He's the head of program at Kaboom Animation Festival. Okay, thanks very much, Emma. And I'm also very happy to see you all virtually uh, with us. My name is Martin. Dies. I'm the head of program. Uh, and normally Aneta Osrek, our director, would also have been here, but I'm going to be here today instead of her. Um, so I'm also very happy that we can do this program. Um, this, the whole idea for this came out of the uh, discussions during our industry days last year. And for us, um, these kinds of programs are actually really important um, because we, um, uh, as a festival, feel that uh, we, a, we want to have year-round presence, but also um, we think it's really important to see Kaboom as a kind of platform for both students and professionals to meet and exchange knowledge. And that's also kind of the idea um, behind this uh, this uh, panel today. Um, it's also nice that it's today because today actually is International Animation Day. Um, so that actually makes it a really nice moment uh, to get together and talk about uh, different uh, initiatives that exist uh, in Europe that have to do with animation and, and, and education. And that. Um, so that's my bit now. Um, I'm going to actually give the word to Carol because Carol is going to be hosting. Carol is from the media desk and uh, she's going to be hosting and moderating uh, the different discussions today. So I'm going to give the virtual mic, hand the virtual mic on uh, to Carol right now. Thanks and welcome everyone. Um, it's always a pleasure to be able to host things together um, across borders. So it's always nice to work together with our colleagues um, elsewhere, as you may know, the media desks um, are in every single European country, so it's not just in the Netherlands and in Luxembourg, but there is um, an office informing about the Creative Europe Media Program in every European country. I don't know where you're all connecting from, so in case you're connecting from elsewhere, not from the Netherlands or from Luxembourg, you can also get in touch with your desk locally if you have any questions after this webinar. But I think without um, further ado, we'll just get started on today's session about media supported uh, training programs for animation professionals. And we'll kick off with La Poudrière, which is based in France, in bourg les valence And I'll give the floor to Annick Tenage, uh, who will tell us a little bit more about their European programs and what they are looking for. Thank you, Carol, and thanks for, invita for the invitation. Um, I'm going to share a document, hopefully. <laughs> Hold on one second. Yes. Um, so uh, La Poudrière is an animation film directing school um, that uh, was initiated 20 years ago. And it was uh, initiated by um, a studio, animation studio in France called Folimage in Valence and now in bourg les valence And it's a um, not-for-profit organization accredited by the French Ministry of Culture. It offers different uh, training courses. The main one is a two-year training course in animation film directing, uh, which is uh, teach, where the teaching is mainly in French with some parts in English, but mainly in French. We also have um, this uh, three uh, months- Anik, we don't see your presentation yet. Oh, no. Just <laughs> quickly interrupt <laughs> again, maybe. Hold on, sorry. No? I don't know why I can't share the document now. Mm -hmm. Thank 
Does it work now? Yes, we can see it now. Ah, thank you. <laughs> okay, so I go back to the uh, to the beginning. So um, a two-year training program on film directing, uh, a three-month script writing course which is open to uh, European professionals. Uh, and I'm going to develop this one a little further. And we also have um, professional training courses on uh, script writing and storyboard, but these are mostly in French. So I'm not going to talk too much about them. And uh, residential, residential writing programs for short films and TV series, uh, which are also in French. So the two-year film directing course uh, is, a, is a, a course where we really work on all aspects of film directing. It's a, it's a postgraduate course for people who are at least 22 years old and already have a technical knowledge of animation, whether they went to school or they learned by themselves. And uh, we take nine to 10 uh, students and trainees per, per year. So we have, um, right now we have 19 uh, students and trainees following the, the two year uh, course. And the teaching is, is based on, um, on a direct transmission by uh, industry professionals. We have about 80 different professionals per year. And it's uh, of course about uh, it's filmmakers, scriptwriters, storyboarders, but also um, editors, producers, book publishers, uh, people talking about distribution, uh, composers, sound designers. We try to have um, guest teachers who are talking about every single aspect of film directing, even if uh, a filmmaker is mostly concerned by script writing and, and storyboard and mise en scène. But uh, the idea is that if you know every aspect like uh, sound design or, or music for animation, then you get a better, better chance to communicate with people when you work on a film. And because we have only nine to 10 students per year, we can really follow uh, each one uh, with their, their, their needs and uh, skills in a very uh, personalized way. I don't know if it's okay, personalized. Uh, anyway, uh, during the two years, they work on a different, uh, first they work on some exercises, uh, like an exercise on storyboard and then some um, editing and then uh, uh, sound design, um, or a lot of, a lot also on storyboard, but also on, on uh, uh, directing actors, that's what they are doing right now. They, they spent this week, they spent two days working on writing uh, dialogues for a scene. And then they got a filmmaker telling them about how to direct actors. And today and tomorrow, they are working with um, actors and direct them to, um, to, to, to play the scene that they wrote. And, uh, and then next Monday, they are going to edit the, what they recorded and uh, as if it would be for a film. It's just to give you an example of exercises they do at the beginning of the year. It's a lot of very short exercises. Um, the goal is not to, to finalize something, but just to understand one aspect of filmmaking. Um, and uh, all the exercises, and then they, they apply what they learn through exercises to uh, making films. They start with very short formats, one minute films. And then uh, we have also uh, even shorter formats on 20 second films and even one second films, which is a lot of fun. We do that with um, the, the filmmaker Gil Alcabetz, who lives and teaches also in uh, Germany. Um, the main film project is the, the graduation film, which is the, the main project for the second year at La Poudrière. And for this project, they, they spent um, most of the year on this project and they work on a more developed script, storyboard and animatic before they make the film which is, uh, they, they can choose the technique, the subject or anything, but it has to be maximum four minutes. We try to always give some, uh, some constraints and especially on the, the, the length of the film so that they can really concentrate on filmmaking issues during the school. And uh, you can see many of the films made by the students on the, the, the Poudrières website. It's, uh, it's called, it, there is a film gallery and you see not all the graduation films because they are also distributed on television or in, uh, in cinemas, but all the other films made during the school from the beginning are on the website. 
if you are interested in discovering some of the films. And uh, the, more specifically, the, the, I'm going to talk more about this three month course on TV series and TV specials, uh, which focuses on concept development. This is a three month course, which is run between um, mid April, mid July every year. And uh, for this course, we invite uh, European young professionals to attend the course and join uh, La Poudrière. We take 10 part we have 10 participants total, uh, and we make people work in group of three to four participants. And each group works on developing uh, a concept. For we start with a TV special uh, and then um, a TV series. So the first part, uh, which lasts three weeks, uh, each group try to develop a TV special. It could be a 13 minute or 26 minutes TV special, but it, it has to be adapted from a children's book. Um, so uh, for this, this specifically, they, uh, they work mostly on the, the script and the, the, the structure of the narration of the TV special. And they also make some um, graphic development and then at the end, they have to pitch the project in front of a professional jury. Uh, after at the end of the course, but it's after three months, three weeks, sorry, of work on this uh, first draft of, of a concept for a TV special. And then we go to the second part. So we the participants uh, work in groups, but different groups than uh, from the beginning. And they work on uh, developing a concept for, for a TV series. So this is a, a bit longer project because it's also a TV series and it's more complex to work on TV series. But it's the same, uh, the same idea. Um, we, we give them some children books uh, and they have to, each group has to adapt one book into a TV series. For this one, they, more, uh, they work more on um, finding the, the structure of the, the concept of the TV series, which is not easy when you, you start with a book because you have to make sure you find a concept that is strong enough, but you can use the, the concept, which was just a children's book in many, many episodes. We always mention uh, like TV series like Peppa Pig, that the concept was so strong that you can make uh, you know it's hundreds of episodes and it still works because the concept is really well structured. So that's the idea to really work on, on the concept um, and then start uh, think of storylines for episodes, write a script or a portion of a script for one um, episode and do some, uh, some graphic um, research. And for this course, and it's interesting because I see that uh, the animation workshop is part of this uh, presentation this afternoon. We have a partnership with the animation workshop and we work with the um, the first uh, students in first year in um, uh, the animation, 2D animation department. And the idea with this partnership with Vivo was to try to find a situation, like a professional situation where people work on a TV concept in a country, but it had many chances to be a co-production uh, if it's in the real production world. So try to get also some grips on what it is to work uh, with people in a different country uh, in a language which has to be English, which is the common language between France and Denmark. Um, and also for them, they are, they are working on developing a concept, which is not easy, it's already very difficult. But then they also have to get the, uh, understand the methodology if you have to send work to other people who are going to contribute to your project. So that's why we thought it was very interesting to, to have this experience. So when they have developed some, when they found the concept and the main characters and enough visual elements, we send elements to Viborg and the students uh, from Viborg, it's a one week project for them. And they, they make very short animation based on the elements that they received. And the, the, the participants here at La Poudrière have to like direct a team, but uh, a distance, they have to direct them, but it's distance and be, uh, be able to communicate intentions and work with animators who are not next to them. So it's quite a challenging uh, project, but it's a very, very interesting part to, uh, to be able to include all these dimensions of um, concept development in a few weeks program. 
And at the end, we make a final pitch uh, presentation in front of a professional jury uh, made of industry professionals. So we try to have mostly scriptwriters, filmmakers, producers, and some broadcasters. So they can really give some feedback from professionals who are working in this field uh, after each presentation. A bit like what, of course, uh, our model is like the cartoon forum, but it's also the same spirit of what's done, uh, which is this week, uh, the cartoon springboard, which is in Valencia this week in Spain. Um, so that's the main, the main idea for this project. And I had a, a don't know if I have time to show a trailer. Do I have time? It's a 30, 50 second trailer. I think maybe what might be worth it showing. Okay. Again, yes. um, so I'm going to show a trailer from a project which, and one thing I forgot to mention is that this is a training course. It's not, uh, it's not like a residence or professional development. It means that it's only exercises. We, we are trying to give people skills that they can apply to their own projects later. When we work on the books, because it's existing um, uh, work from, from original work from other authors, we only get authorization to work on this project, uh, like making like a fake adaptation during the, 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 the school program. Uh, and that's the main goal. Some participants uh, really liked the project and wanted, wanted to continue to further work on the project after the school. So we put them in connection with the, the book publishers and the book, the authors of the book to get authorization, like to show it what they did. They wanted to show it, at, uh, to submit it at Cartoon Springboard. And they, they showed it at Cartoon Springboard. And then they now they are developing the TV series, which is not the goal of the training course, but it's nice when it happens sometime. And I just wanted to show the trailer of this project called Moose and Bichon. If I can share it. <laughs> because I'm not a tech person, as you can see. I think... I think it's outside of this presentation, I need right? Yes, it's probably maybe or on another screen. That's it. <laughs> um yeah, I, I don't think we managed to see it, but we could always. Oh, um, no. it, <laughs> but it's not an issue. We can always just uh, collect the link afterwards and send it to um, yeah. participants if if people are interested. Of course, that's not a problem. We can just send it by email. I, I just checked with the later. producer if it's okay, but I'm sure it will. Be. Oh yeah, of okay. course. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Sorry. Oh, sorry, I didn't realize we didn't see. It. <laughs> Um, but I see we already have a question from uh, Joyce, so uh, please feel free to take the mic. Thank you so much. It was so lovely hearing from you, Annick. Um, I was wondering if you could share some of the application requirements to join you in this beautiful place in France for the yeah. concept development for TV oh, Sure. I'm going to try to share it right now, otherwise I will send it, <laughs> but I just make one try. <laughs> okay, this was uh, for this year. So it's just a general presentation and it explains um, the eligibility the, criteria, yes. Yeah, um, so I don't have the dates. Uh, the, the dates confirmed for next year, but this is the same period of time. And when you have a uh, training objectives, I will, I will send it and send the link. Methodology and um, a description of uh, each part. I, and I forgot to mention that because it's between April and July, we have one week at the INSC Festival during the training course because it's a very important event for the industry. 
And then uh, for applications and reference from uh, past projects. And is it necessary to be European to attend? Um, <laughs> it's it's uh, because it's supported by the Europe Creative Media. We really try to um, make sure we have a good representation of European participants because that's that's uh, the idea. So it's mostly European, yes. Okay, that's great. And during this time when a student is working on that whole film um, or project, do they get uh, industry knowledge on the business aspects and economic feasibility of it? Because that's something the jury judges the project by. Uh, I'm not sure, I, do you, you mean as requirement for to apply? Or is it something we will talk about during the course? Uh, you talk about, like you mentioned, you talk about distribution in your script writing course. Um, not, of course, it can be mentioned uh, while the, the participants uh, talk with the, the guest teachers, but it's a very short period of time to do all this um, creative development. So we really try to stay focused on the content and uh, see if um, we talk more about like a, what is the, what, a, what does a, a TV channel want for a kids program, the audience, uh, if they are looking more from a preschool, uh, do they take a serial, you know, a TV series with like serials, uh, more like the, the, what type of content is important to the industry, but we don't, we don't cover every single aspect and uh, no, not distribution, it's too short. And it's not our, our we're not, we are not specialized in uh, the business side of uh, animation in our courses. And what would you say, um, Anik, is the, um, let's say, the best level uh, for people to, to apply? Like, we, at what stage of their career should they be in when, when they apply um, it's, to your it's course? More, um, it's more targeted on young professionals, not students, but uh, young professionals. But we had some who were a, who had a little more experience. Mostly people who really have some, um, like, uh, some, some experience in, uh, of course, in animation and not necessarily filmmaking, but having, having a, a strong like a visual style or, or liking to develop script writing, at least one strong, uh, one skill in one of the aspects, either it's more script writing and structure, um, structuring a narration or more on the visual side, because people work in team. So it's nice to have different uh, profiles in, in the same team and they are uh, complementary, as you say. And people apply with a portfolio rather than a specific project, I guess, yeah, because it's not they, project they de develop the project in the course. Uh, no, they don't develop their own projects. It's, um, they, will, they will work in a team and we give the book because mm -hmm. we really want this to be, uh, people to be detached from their own project so you can learn more. You are not so much involved in uh, changing things in your project and uh, it's none of the participants project. But mm -hmm. the nice thing is that most of them afterwards, they apply these skills to their own projects, which is what we, what we hope. Of course, that's the outcome that you're, that yeah. you're um, aiming for. Yeah. And do you have any statistics perhaps, or would you say that the application procedure is very competitive? Do you get a lot of applicants? What is this, let's say the selection rate uh, compared yeah. to the applications you get and, then, mm -hmm. and, and the number of applicants that you it's you not select. That, um, well, it's difficult to say. And the last uh, last years were very special, and we had to cancel in 2020. So, but in general, we don't get that many because I think it's uh, quite challenging to um, to focus uh, to decide to go to a training course. It's a very intense course for three months, and to and to really work hard on the concept development, which is not your project. People have to be in a mindset that they realize that it's a, a, there's a lot of value to uh, to learn skills more than uh, developing their own projects. So now, past participants are very good ambassadors for this course, mm -hmm. but it's not the most like um, uh, attractive because it's uh, it's quite a lot of work. So I think it, people really need to be interested also in TV series and television projects. Mm. 
still that's interesting and quite encouraging yes. I, I, I guess for potential candidates <laughs> no, <of course. laughs> uh, perhaps something we should mention is also the cost and whether there is anything you can yes. provide in terms of scholarships or yes. uh, the cost yeah, is um, it's like the the registration cost is because it's supported by um, uh, French uh, um, French partners and the media the cost is only like 1000 euro for participant costs and for uh, some European participants, depending on the personal situation, there is a, uh, how do you say, a grant to, um, yep. to uh, and they don't pay uh, the, the 1,000 euros. And we can also offer a grant for some people for um, housing in Valence, to stay in Valence for free. free okay, months. great. Yes. Okay, so there is an opportunity yes. for a uh, scholarship uh, depending yeah. on and again of course your situation but, uh, yeah. yes. yes and perhaps I can also add that in case you're interested in applying and you're looking for uh, funding it's always worth getting in touch with um, the media desk in your country and ask what kind of funding opportunities there might be for example from the national uh, funding side exactly. as well so we yes. are also there to help you uh, access potential uh, training grants in in your country, etc. If if there is uh, uh, if there are any difficulties in terms of um, yeah, just the, fin the financials of it. Yeah. Any other questions from the floor? Maybe there is a question in the chat. Oh, can I hear myself. <laughs> uh, uh, Okay, yes, is the so course in English? The course is in English from what I have understood from it's uh, both Annick's French, presentation. It's uh, French and English and uh, of course non-French speaking participants work in English. <laughs> in, uh, we have always uh, two, two guest teachers, one is following the French groups and one is following the groups who work in English. And then perhaps just one last question from the chat, which is what an ideal portfolio should look like uh, when, when you apply. Do you have any tangible information on that? Um, it's very simple. We asked for um, like a, 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 what's very important is a covering letter explaining the motives for TV series development and script writing, not just filmmaking in general, and then a resume. And, uh, and of course, uh, video, visual elements to see what is the, the, the graphic style of the, the person who's applying. And if they have some animation works, we like to see, uh, it can be films or exercises, but we'd like to see animation works as well. And then we have individual interviews with applicants. Great, thank you. Um, I think that's us running out of time for this uh, <laughs> first speaker anyway. So thank you, Anik, for joining us today. Thank you. Um, I, I think you might have to leave us before the end of this webinar, yes. uh, in which case, um, if you would like to get in touch with Anik, just um, contact the media desks and we'll put you in touch or uh, we'll, we'll find a way to, um, or, or the, to connect. The, the main web, uh, web mail, um... Email address is very simple. It's contact at poudrier.eu. And the website is poudrier.eu. Like you Great. Know. We'll put that in the chat yeah. um, as well for all the attendees. Thank you, Anik. Thank and you. we're moving on to our next uh, program, which is CEE Animation, um, a workshop based in the Czech Republic. And the speaker for that is Juraj Krasnorski. Welcome and over to you. Hello, uh, nice to meet all of you. Thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, so yes, I came to present the C animation workshop. Uh, it's not really based in, in, in Czech Republic. It's uh, actually a Sorry. supranational uh, organization, the C animation running this. So it's all over the central and Eastern Europe. And I'm actually based in Bratislava, but most of the team is in uh, Slovenia, in Ljubljana. But well, it's just- a My bad, of... Sorry. Sorry. No, no problem. <laughs> uh, so, I share my screen. Can you just confirm if you see it? Yes, you see it. Okay, thank you. So, so yes, so my presentation about the CE animation workshop and about the next year's edition. Uh, 
I um, well, first I started. We are a, a professional training program supported by Creative Europe uh, Media, and uh, so the main aim of the CE Animation Workshop is that it's a year-long training for teams of producer, director, and a scriptwriter around an animated project. So the training is focused on full development of the project itself but also on raising the overall professional competencies of the of the team in all aspects related to a successful career in the industry of animated film. So the accepted formats, types of projects that we accept in the workshop are uh, shorts, feature films, TV series, TV specials, hybrid films, which could be documentaries, for example, or a mixture of animation and, and live action where the animation plays uh, significant or um, more than a half, let's say, uh, of the of the work. And we also accept XR uh, projects. Uh, all participants must come from um, member states of Creative Europe. We focus on low production capacity countries, mainly from the Central and Eastern uh, Europe and the region. But we are also open for high production capacity countries, such as um, Netherlands, for example, uh, France, Germany, uh, and so on. But with projects uh, that have um, a link to the Central and Eastern Europe that, that um, intend to co-produce, for example, co-develop and co-produce and so on with the Central and Eastern Europe. So there's a clear focus on, uh, on, on the region of Central and Eastern Europe. Uh, we usually select uh, 12 projects plus two uh, what we call career-oriented participants. Uh, you will see during the presentation some some photos from from uh, a module that we that we had in uh, in Croatia, uh, Opatia, so that you you get a, an idea of the atmosphere, how the how the actual workshop looks like. So um, the participants that come with the project, uh, usually there can be two or three participants around the project. So as I said, the producer, the director, um, and the script writer, sometimes one of the three can actually be the visual um, director or art designer. This depends really on the project and its needs. And what we call the career-oriented participants, uh, these can be producers coming from live action uh, who want to learn about animation without yet having a concrete project. Or these can be also people such as uh, broadcasters or film funds representative sales agents. I mean, whoever who, who want to build um, a strategy um, in their company around, um, uh, around uh, production of uh, animated works. Uh, often the participants who come without project uh, end up somehow cooperating on the projects uh, that, that are participating either as uh, co-producers or in a, in a different way. Um, a little bit about the format. So we, we work over uh, a whole year, which is, which is great because there the, the, the projects really have the, the time to, to change, to develop and to mature. Um, we have four modules. Uh, they are one week long. Uh, one of the results of, uh, of COVID uh, for us was that we, we shifted, um, as everybody else, to, uh, to online. But we realized that actually the format of having this hybrid uh, three online modules and one residential is actually great for our participants and for us. Uh, one of the, um, well, of course, the obvious um, reason for holding a residential workshop is that uh, human contact is um, irreplaceable for networking and building long lasting relationships. But we also realized that the online, online format has many advantages, such as, uh, of course, ecological benefits, we don't travel, uh, but also time wise, the participants lose less working and family time. We can invite more guest speakers, um, making the program richer, and so on. So um, the, the basic structure is um, every day there is a group work, uh, which means we have two groups led by uh, group leaders, um, one seasoned producer and one script consultant. And um, basically, it means that 
each module, uh, each project receives at least two hours of special attention of the whole group receiving feedback, both from uh, the group leaders, but also from, uh, from the participants. Um, and then the rest of um, the module is filled with lectures, masterclasses, case studies, one-on-one uh, -on -one expert feedback, um, and, and so on. Um, another important part of, uh, of the workshop are individual consultations, which happen sometimes during the weeks, but also between the weeks, which are evenly spaced between February and November. And the individual consultations are on script, on visual development of the project, uh, on pitch, uh, but also, and this we are adding as a, as a new feature for, for next year, we will be uh, focusing on company strategy so, so that uh, the producers um, participating in the program not only concentrate on making that one project happen, but also think about their whole company, their whole slate, um, you know, a, a whole strategy for, 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 for the company, which we believe is very important uh, in, to build a, a strong industry. Uh, finally, um, where everything uh, is, is leading to in the, in the final module uh, are the industry meetings, which happen over the last uh, two days of the final module. Uh, these are uh, meetings with um, um, decision makers invited specifically to meet the needs of uh, the project. And the meetings happen in a one-on-one -on -one online format during 25 minutes. Uh, so these representatives are either from funding or from sales, broadcasters, uh, whoever is needed to, 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 to really help the project um, move forward. Sorry. So, what are the concrete outcomes of uh, of the of the workshop? Uh, first of all, um, it's the full production deck and and pitch. This is something uh, that the team is working on during the whole um, whole year um, by iterations of um, receiving feedback on their drafts and making their production deck uh, and their pitch uh, more professional and 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 better so that at the end of the year uh, each project is really uh, ripe and mature to 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 meet the the market basically uh, the other um, concrete outcome of the of the workshop is the script and visuals development of course this depends on on the the status of each project also on it depends if we speak about tv series or short films obviously a short film gets uh, you know moves uh, much more forward during the year than a tv series uh, because of the of the amount of uh, of work on a tv series but uh, but but that's the that's the concrete outcome and of course uh, then the networking the the know-how uh, the industry meetings uh, all the all, all these um, um, all these things that help uh, really the professionals grow uh, not not only related to to the current project they are working on but but professionally uh, for for also for the for the future projects uh, so the submissions are open uh, this is the important uh, information I wanted to share with you. Uh, the submissions for the 22 edition are open until November 15th. Uh, if you apply with uh, a project, we will need at least uh, a treatment. Uh, it's in English, of course. Um, we will need basic information about, um, about the participants, uh, about the project, um, a motivation letter, uh, and so on. Um, if you apply um, as a career-oriented participant, we obviously don't need the project, but uh, there will be a presentation of yourself as a um, professional and, and the aims you are looking for in the, in, the, in, the, in the workshop. The first session in 22 will start uh, end of February 2022. Uh, I want to mention that uh, the workshop is, is part of a, a larger family of activities that are done under CE Animation. So CE Animation as a brand uh, or as a grouping is, um, is actually a structure of association of producers of animated um, films from um, the region of Central and Eastern Europe. 
And uh, together we created this structure which organizes different events and activities. So the biggest is the CE Animation Forum, which, uh, which is a pitching platform, the largest in, uh, in the region, but it's international. It's not only open for projects from the region, but from the whole world. Uh, so this is something we do already for perhaps 10 years. And uh, another activity is uh, called uh, CE Animation Talent, which is a promotional activity for uh, young talents from the region. The CE Animation Workshop, which I just presented, the training for professionals. Uh, the latest addition in our family of activities is called uh, the Animation Hub, which is an online streaming platform. And uh, you can find all this uh, through, through just one address, uh, ceanimation.eu. There you can find all the information about what we are doing and also a direct link to, to the application form. So uh, if you have any questions uh, that I didn't present, I'm, I'm here ready to answer. I see Joyce has a question. Uh, Hello, yes, thank you so much for sharing all of it. Thank you so much. Um, I would like to ask if it's necessary to be a producer or have a production company to apply. Well, so uh, as I said, this is a professional uh, training program mainly aimed at, um, at teams uh, composed of a producer, a director, and a scriptwriter. So we are looking for, for participants who already have the experience um, of having produced something, at least a short film. So the structure usually there already exists. Uh, I mean, you, you can apply as, a, as an individual, um, as an artist, of either, um, either as a participant without a project, a career-oriented, uh, but but there you need to make um, um, you know the justification for for what you what are your aims. Uh, this is definitely a, a, a more business oriented um, and industry oriented uh, activity as compared to La Poudrière, which is really oriented on the artists uh, and the artistic side. Um, so I don't know if that answers your question, but um, um, it does. A quick follow up, I would like to ask. Um, how big does the studio need to be? How many short films or works do they have to have produced? We, we, we don't have strict uh, definitions on that. We really uh, like to mm, decide uh, on, on the project itself, on, on the potential of the project that we see. Uh, also on uh, what, what, what we see that we can help uh, the project with, where it needs help, how the projects, the 12 projects in the selection are always selected also as a combination of how it works with the others, because the, the group work uh, and the, the, the dynamics of the group are extremely important for us. We really want people to meet uh, on the, you know, on, on more or less the same level and, and in, a, in an atmosphere where they can really help each other. Uh, so, so it might happen that that you know a, a very very professional uh, project. We will tell them like, sorry, we you know you don't need our help, and 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 the same for let's say um, emerging um, projects. Uh, it might be too soon to 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 apply, but um, it's it's always worth trying. It's a, it's it's great to to go through the selection process to to test the quality of your project. You will receive feedback. When you apply so it's always uh, good to try to apply i encourage you that's great thank you so much for sharing and just lastly um, is there a way to contact you after yes of course i will put my contact in the in the chat and uh, you can contact me directly thank you perhaps i will follow up also on the selection process same question that i asked uh, anik before is it very competitive? Uh, what should, yeah, what do you usually expect in terms of uh, applications and also on um, the project that you submit at what development stage should it be at? You mentioned the treatment, what in terms of the visuals, for example, or any other material that is required? Yes. Uh, yeah, thank you for the question. Um, in terms of uh, competitiveness, we we are really happy that that each year we, we, we receive um, over 60 applications. From, from all over Europe, uh, which is which is great because there's a there's a real competition, a real selection. We 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 select um, 
the, the, the selection committee is about seven, eight people. Uh, some of them really concentrate on the content, on the stories. We, we, we pay attention to the visual concept, how, how far it is uh, or already. Uh, or what are the possibilities? Where it, where can you go? I mean, animation without um, without visuals, um, it, it's it's just uh, you know it, it doesn't work. So uh, this is also important for us. Um, we compare the the stage of the companies where they are at. Uh, you know all this all this information, uh, but it can it can happen that that. Um, some projects are more developed when they apply. Some are just in a concept stage, but where we feel that, that this has real potential and we know where this is going and we feel that the producer and the director and the scriptwriter know where this is going, then, then we also accept less developed projects. But um, ideally uh, for the producer and for, for the team, uh, the, the, the one year of the workshop should really be used to uh, to to, to prepare the project to 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 uh, to hit the market so basically it's uh, it's it's that uh, stage of uh, development okay and i was wondering um i saw that um now you also uh, accept uh, xr project for example in general how do you address uh, let's say technological change in perhaps looking back at the previous few years of the workshop and also where you think or where you see yourself go over the, the next few years how do you take that into account I mean technology is changing quite rapidly at the moment especially in animation in terms of how you produce uh, uh, so yeah how, how do you adjust or how do you address that so uh, opening the workshop for for XR was was one of those uh, uh, changes that we that we embraced that we we, we saw um, on one hand the growing interest of the animation industry in XR projects um, and and we see it also as a potential for uh, for the producers um, we actually want to push them in the direction because we 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 see there is potential when you already are a producer of, uh, um, let's say, classical animated uh, linear content, uh, there's a huge potential in, in, in switching towards XR because the technology is not, it, 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 it's not the problem. Uh, the, the, the technology can be, can be managed. Uh, it's, uh, we, we see XR as, um, uh, as a possibility for, for creativity, for, 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 for new, um, new formats of experimenting, how to tell stories and so on. So we, we see it from, from that aspect. Unfortunately, we actually didn't, um, we had a few applications, but that didn't make it through the selection process. So for the moment, we did not have uh, any XR project, but, but we are still open. There are not so many, actually, you, if you, even if you follow the, the XR mar market and the numbers are growing, but not, not that much. Uh, I want to um, make um, a note here. Uh, the XR project we are aiming for have to have something with animation. It needs to be animated XR project. Of, of course. course. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Have we got any other questions from... Uh, our attendees, perhaps. Mm, no, well, I'll have another one. Um, with the professionals that you invite for their project uh, presentations, are they also mostly from the CEE region or do you look uh, across uh, those borders as well? No, this is this is really um, we we really uh, look at uh, at the whole Europe. The mainly the the concept is that although um, well, accepting only CE uh, or uh, low production capacity uh, participants in the past years was actually a criteria of uh, of the funding uh, by by Creative Europe. It made sense. Uh, this is how we started. This is where we were coming from. Uh, so we were limited to these participants. But um, anyway, um, projects ambitious animated projects today in Europe are always done in co-production and uh, and we see uh, regularly these co-productions being actually made 
uh, with, with even more than just two countries and, and often it's a combination of high production capacity countries with, with low production capacity countries. So, so this was completely natural to, to invite always the decision makers from the, the from whole Europe and even the world. Um, I mean, we have uh, Canadian uh, part decision makers and so on, uh, UK, of course. Um, and now for next year, uh, we, we open also uh, for participants coming from high production capacity countries, as I said at the beginning. So, so this is the natural evolution of, uh, of where the industry is, is heading. We, we observed over, over the last year, let's say 10 years since we do the Sea Animation uh, Forum, uh, the, the, the level of um, proficiency of the producers um, from our countries uh, got really, um, I mean, very, very high, and, and 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 now we are competitive on the on the European market. Um, the talent was was there always, but uh, I'm, I'm speaking here about the the capacity of the studios and the production companies of actually doing successful co-productions and and reaching um, financing uh, available uh, in Europe. Um, the, th this level got, got much higher. So, so now it makes perfect sense to open the whole workshop for participants for, from the whole Europe. Great. Uh, we have one final question in the chat, and that's if you provide professional feedback on um, the applications that you receive. Yes, yes. So the, the um, I mean, part, part of the evaluation process might be already a meeting, an online uh, consultation. Uh, and uh, and even if that doesn't happen, uh, there's always a, a written uh, feedback. Great. Um, I think that uh, yeah, brings us to the end of um, this lot. I just wanted to say I really love the fact that you're not even just based in one country, but that even your endeavor as such is a cross-border initiative. I think it's really nice, and it's also been really interesting to see how I mean, I joined the desk right, six or seven years ago, and just over the past six or seven years, how well structured this whole endeavor has become. And for those of you who are thinking of applying one day, but maybe not this time, and you're attending Annecy, I also recommend that you go visit Uri and all his partners at the stand in at MIFA. It's a really nice opportunity to talk to all of them and see how they work together on an everyday basis, which is which is great. Thank okay, you then much. we're gonna change regions and uh, go up uh, north uh, to Pear and the animation workshop. Yes, thank you. Hello, guys. So my name is Pear and uh, um, <clears throat> sorry, I just have a glass of water here. So it'll, it's, a, it's a little bit different presentation because I'm not going to gonna talk only about like one uh, project. Luckily, we are um, we're quite lucky in that we have uh, different projects supported by Creative Europe Media. So I don't know how much you know about the animation workshop, um, but this presentation will not be about the, the school as such. That I'm just sharing now here. Um, you can see this, right? We did a test yes. before, it works, fantastic. So, you know, the animation workshop, the name is maybe a little bit misleading because we have, uh, you know, three bachelor educations. There's an artist residency and a film workshop. Um, there's a drawing school and an incubator. There's a lot of things. But of course, the interesting uh, aspect for you guys is the professional training courses that we, we offer. And um, we use this guy, the samurai, as a symbol of you. He's basically you. Uh, and Or actually a symbol of the where we would like to take you and where we would like to help you uh, reach this 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 level because he's the top guy you know he's the expert in his field so we want to to help our participants become uh, samurais in the animation industry and the way we do this is is through a, a, a number of courses i just want to see if i can ch change the slide so what I'm, I'm going to say something in general about the, the how we approach professional training uh, at the animation workshop, um, and then I'm going to dive into um, some of the courses, um, the Creative Europe Media supported courses, and and if we have time, I'm also just you know, mentioning some of the other courses that we do that 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 might be relevant for you guys. So. Um, in general, we, we have a good uh, collaboration with the industry. 
um, a very strong collaboration, and we 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 try to adapt the the number of the, the courses we do to the needs of the industry, so to to meet that uh, that demand. So we try to keep keep it very relevant to the courses that we do. So we also sometimes uh, shift around and of course update curriculum uh, on the courses we do. So it's um, different formats. We have semester courses and we also have shorter courses and master classes. Um, we also do on-demand class uh, courses for, for external companies such as uh, Lego and, and Ubisoft as well. But it's really the professional training courses that are, that are the focus. Um, so it's um, it's kind of a similar structure as the way we do our bachelor education. So there are no no teachers on staff. We hire teachers uh, who are actually working in the industry to come and teach for a specific amount of time for a week or two or three, um, and that really creates a, a good uh, dynamic. Uh, so people, you know, the artists work on on a production the one week and the next week they are actually in the classroom here uh, teaching. Um, so it's all full time, full time classes. The teacher is maybe not lecturing the whole day, but he he or she is uh, gives a lecture in the in the morning, and then uh, he is in the classroom the rest of the day to give feedback. Uh, all the teaching is in English. We have a very international uh, environment. Um, I would say on the best of programs, um, it's maybe 50-50. So fifty percent are Danish, and the rest are international. On the professional training courses, it's it's the vast majority of, of participants are from outside of Denmark. It's also a very creative environment. Sorry, it's a very creative environment. Um, so you you meet uh, other artists and participants uh, in this soft value program. This is what we call uh, everything that happens outside of the, the course. So it can be different extra talks, uh, lectures and parties, uh, different sports. Uh, we, you know, in our industry, we spend a lot of time sitting down, uh, looking into the screen or the on the uh, on the paper. So it's really important that we also try to instigate some some physical movement. So that's a big part of what we do. It's it's of course all uh, optional. Um, so it's a very international, very creative environment, and and the big part of it is actually uh, that you you build your network with the fellow. Uh, participants on the courses and uh, other artists and residents and uh, students that you meet here at the school, of course, also with the external uh, uh, guest teachers. So I'm going to run through some of the courses we do. Uh, we have a course in 3D character animation. It's uh, redesigned a little bit now. It's, it's 14 weeks in total uh, with uh, 12 weeks on-site training and then to the possibility to have um, two extra weeks uh, um, either online or continue to be in the in the classroom. The, the focus is 3D character animation, of course, uh, in Maya. And we use uh, Maya as uh, because it's the industry standard software um, still. And there's no there's no need uh, to know Maya uh, before. So the course starts with an introduction to Maya and then goes into um, animation basics. So starting from the bouncing ball to pendulum swing and some walk cycles. And then we move into more um, uh, advanced uh, animation uh, training in acting and, and dialogue. And then the course uh, ends with a group project. You do a, a final uh, project, a little mini production um before these extra two weeks of uh which is a new thing we added which is a portfolio uh, uh module so either you can go back and revisit some of your earlier assignments or you can make a new portfolio piece and and build a really strong um, showreel that you can get out uh, you can go out and get a job uh, with afterwards so you can see some of the details here uh, uh, as well we we also, um, the course ends just before the NSC Animation Festival. So we uh, include um, the accreditation in, in the prize. Uh, it's, again, it's optional if you want to go, but we, we at least assist in the, with the accreditation uh, and the um, transport to, to the festival. So which is always a really, really nice way to, 
to finish uh, the animation course. Next program we, we organized, we've been doing a test version of this, uh, but now we, uh, we will run it uh, uh, again next year. Uh, hopefully with the support of Creative Europe Media, it's, the application has been submitted. Uh, so this is our simulation course, Creative Simulation Technologies. It's also a semester course, 12 weeks. Um, we are lucky that we had it uh, certified by, by Side Effects, the company be, behind Houdini, and which is of course really nice. It's a quality, quality stamp, but it also gives participants some benefits uh, in that you get a, um, a, a what do you call it? a license, a Houdini license after the course. So we, um, the, the main focus of course is, is simulations and the whole course is structured around the study of a natural phenomenon. So you as the student, you study a natural phenomenon, could be like a volcano for instance, and then you recreate, uh, recreate it as a, as a simulation. And it doesn't have to be one-to-one, -one. you know, we can take part of it and, and, and do simulations. So on this, um, the image you see here, uh, there was a short uh, animated clip that the student made. And I think there were like 12 different simulations going on within this scene. Um, so with this project, you, you dive into uh, Houdini. First and foremost, we try to make it software independent because software uh, change over time. But the core is really Houdini, um, which is a, a a very uh, powerful software and it's uh, software on the rise. It's really being used not only for simulation, but for a lot of other stuff. But we, we focus on the kind of the primary use of Houdini, which is simulation. Um, but then you also dive into Touch Designer, which is, we call it uh, Houdini's uh, cousin because they started, as, they started out as one software and then they grew in two different directions. And the, the, what Touch Designer does is actually it gives a real-time element to simulation. There's also a, a dive in, we dive into game engines and see how your simulations will, can be implemented in, in a game engine such as Unreal. Uh, and then there's also a module of direct programming which re would really allow the students to, to tailor their uh, simulations. Um, and it's, this is a course we created in a response also from the industry. We hear it's, it's, uh, it's simulation artists are uh, needed. And we have uh, some excellent teachers. The main teacher is a very uh, super expert in Houdini. And he actually um, composes music using the software. Um, yes. Now I include the visual effects, uh, our visual effects program. And as you can see here, it's, uh, it doesn't really uh, include any effects. And it's because we, we're tra changing the funding structure and we're changing the, the course as such. So I didn't want to put a lot of uh, facts in here and make you uh, fall in love with the course if we can't run it the same way that we do it uh, right now. So we are running the course right now. Um, it, it is a semester course. It's also supported by the Creative Europe Media program. Um, and we will continue to do VFX training uh, next year as well we, we're just not sure about the the format it, as it mentions here it can be a summer school but can be a series of of shorter courses um over the the fall next year so we have um if we that was more skill-based training courses if we go into more uh, project-based so we have our uh, animation sans frontier program asf it's a, it's a special program that actually um, in cooperation between us uh, at the Animation Workshop and then the Film Academy in württemberg in Germany, uh, Momé in Hungary and um, Goblin in, in Paris, in France. So the, you will be, as a student, you'll be traveling around to these four uh, cities, these four partner schools. Uh, and have a, a two-week uh, module in each uh, location. Um, and if I can, uh, I, I think I'll start with the price here because you know I, I still think it's quite amazing. It's only 1,500 euros. And for this price, you get, uh, uh, of course, all the teaching, but you also get 
um, hotel stays in all these uh, venues um, and the trip from your from where you live to uh, to each location and of course we wouldn't be able to to offer it like this if it wasn't for the support of, of creative europe it's it's all about um, project development and production uh, for for the animation industry so we we focus you know you you have a project that you develop throughout uh, these six months with some time in between the modules to to work on your project um, so it it includes concept development and financing production management uh, and marketing and distribution and this program really gives you a good overview of what it takes to produce animation in europe you get a good understanding of the different markets that you travel around to uh, it's again it's a very good uh, networking opportunity as well so you network with the the students that i think 20 students or participants on the course but through all, throughout these uh, four modules, you meet uh, 40 or even more uh, animation tutors. So you really build a strong network uh, throughout these um, six months. In this same vein as uh, pro um, uh, project-based courses, we have the AniDocs Lab. This is a, a merging of animation and documentary film. So we have, uh, you, you apply for the project and throughout these three modules, online consulting in between, we help you advance your project, uh, match, do some matchmaking, uh, assign you with some visual artists here at the animation workshop. And then at the end, you will have a, 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 a trailer and a, a pitch package that you can then continue uh, to develop and, and hopefully produce your animated documentary film. So as it says here, it's both for people uh, with a documentary film background, or it can also be uh, animation film directors and creative producers. I want to mention um, a, a project that grew out of this because it's a very nice story. It's, uh, it's a project that started eight years ago in the AniDocs lab called Flea. And it's, a, it's an animated documentary film about a, a refugees you know, a refugee's uh, a trip from Afghanistan to Denmark. Um, so of course it's been long on the way, but now uh, two, two days ago, it was, uh, um, I, we found out that it was Denmark's uh, contribution to the Oscar race, like in the in best international uh, uh, feature. So that was really nice that it had, had its roots in, in the AniDocs program. Um, but also here we have some really good opportunities to, to, to network and to, uh, to pitch your project. At the end of this course, you pitch your, uh, your project in front of a panel of, of uh, industry guests. And you get feedback and, and advice on how to, to take your, your project uh, further. And then I've been speed talking, uh, so I would have time just to mention some of the other courses that we do that might be interesting. I hope that's okay, Carol. Uh, so we, we do have a course in Storyboard, uh, a semester course as well. Um, and you get training in various aspects of storyboarding. So you know, in there's a module for TV series, animated TV series, for feature films. Uh, there's a module for more acting, acting boards and more uh, script writing and, and board driven storytelling. And I'm quickly going to browse through the next one also. We have a, another course in illustration. Two modules put together. You can choose to take one module or both. Um, the first module is drawing and the second one is illustration. You can see some of the, the, the content here. It, and I, I think it's important to mention that a good visual communicator doesn't need to be a, a master of drawing at all. This is a, um, yeah, so um, I quickly move on to the next one's animation producer. This course is project-based, it's very short. It's two times one week. Um, and it's, it's, it will clarify what kind of producer you are, but it will also give you an overview and introduction to what, what, what is actually needed to produce uh, animation. Uh, you know, in terms of accounting, distribution, and cultivating talents, and co-productions, and, and uh, everything that's uh, involved in this. Similar course, 
Animation production management, this one is not project-based. It starts when the budget, um, when the production has been greenlit, then how do you actually stay, uh, um, stay on uh, and, and manage the production and stay on budget? And um, how do you manage the artists? And lastly, uh, I just want to mention also, we have some summer schools. This is one of them, 2D uh, TV animation summer school. Uh, it's three weeks and the focus is on uh, training uh, students in, in Toon Boom uh, Harmony, which we see more as becoming the industry standard stuff, software. It used to be TV paint, but now we're more, moving more in this, in this direction. Yes. Thank you. Luckily, you were the last speaker. <laughs> so you got, you got to take some liberties on the Yes, and sorry about the duration of your speech. So you have questions? Joyce? Yes. So thank you so much for sharing everything. You know, Animation Workshop has been on my mind for quite some time. I even apply to your open workshop artist residency under my name. So I wanted to ask you uh, regarding the animation sans frontiers, hope I'm pronouncing it right. Um, I heard that a master's degree is a requirement to um, attend it. Would that be true? No, 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 no. I mean, uh, not at all, actually. We, we look more at the, the, you know, what kind of work have you been doing before? and not so much on education at all, so uh, no. Oh, wow, so I actually heard it from someone at MOM, one of the uh, universities you partner with. So what is the type of work you look for um, in an application for ASF? So if I just, um, thank you for the question, I'm just gonna find it here. So ASF, um, you know, our, we have different target groups. So you can be a, a, a script writer, a producer, or a, or a director. So, and also a technical director. So you actually don't necessarily need to apply with a project. You can also just apply to ASF, and then uh, and then um, and then be assigned uh, one of the other uh, uh, productions, so to speak. Um, so it's it's a little bit different. What kind of uh, criteria we're looking for in in this regard? Um, it is it is a bit tricky. Uh, we do get a lot of applications for for the ASF program, so there's a there's a selection, uh, and it it is a little needle a hole in the needle to get through. Um, I don't think I can give you kind of more details uh, about you know, specifically what they're looking for, but they look in in your uh, the the we, what you've been doing before, your track record. Um, uh, what kind of experience you have. I think, does it answer your question? Yes, yes. Just just a quick follow-up regarding your animation producing course as well. So for both of these, do you need to have like made some short films or uh, have worked on a production previously? For the producer course, um, Yes, I mean, you, you do, do need to demonstrate that you have a, um, a, a project completed and you will, for this course, you also need to apply with your own project that you will be developing. Uh, that's not the case with the animation production uh, management or manager course. Um, and to be honest, I, I, I'm not sure you, you need to demonstrate um, that you have produced something before on this particular course on the animation production side. Uh, but we are looking, you know, the same as CEE. You have to apply with a with a motivation letter uh, describing what are you actually, you know, what are your motivations for going into this course. Okay, great. And if you could just share regarding your animation producing and ASF, how many applications do you re receive around? So for uh, animation production management, I'm I'm not sure. I can get back to you on this. But the ASF, it's around um, 70 or 80 applicants for these, uh, or even more for these 20 seats. So it's not impossible at all, but it is uh, not everyone we can take, unfortunately. And, and for the producing one, animation producing? Well, I can't give you a number for that. It was, uh, 
it was the uh, first time this year we ran the program and I, and actually I don't know how many applicants we had on, on, on that one. Okay, great. So thank you so much for sharing all of it. Just lastly, what, can I can contact you? Can all of us contact you anytime later? You can, and I will just also copy my, uh, my email in the chat. I'll stop sharing. Uh, Pair is the animation production course uh, just for animation producers, or is it potentially also for live action producers wishing to cross over into animation? I mean, potentially, yes, it could be also for live action. Uh, but the, the, you know, the content is, is animation related, yeah. Yeah. I will just give you our um, website as well in the chat animationworkshop.via.dk. And there you have my mail as well, prsmia.dk. Thank you so much. I hope to maybe see you at the animation workshop if I get it. <laughs> um, on just on the some of the slides you um, that you showed, they featured the uh, the course fee. Does that fee also cover uh, having to relocate to Denmark for that period, or do you still need to factor in other costs? Or, uh, yeah, yeah, you, you, I mean, the, the course fee covers the all the teaching, so that's the tuition fee, and then in addition to this, then yes, you need to to uh, to pay for your travel and your your housing in in Denmark. But for of course for the Creative Europe Media supported courses, we offer scholarships as well. Um, uh, three types of scholarships. It can be the, the course fee that would be waived, or we, we would be able to cover your travel uh, from your home country to Vibo and back after the course. And then, of course, also uh, uh, your housing expenses uh, at the, the, um, the on-campus dormitory. So in some of the courses, we do have this option to, to give out scholarships. I'm just looking at uh, the gallery, if anybody else would like to come in with a question or uh, any follow-ups. Otherwise, I just wanted to highlight also what you said about that network, which I think is something we should say about all the courses that we presented here today. It really is uh, just by already meeting people from across Europe at quite an early stage, either in your career or in your project that you build this network that is really going to help you afterwards. If you look at how many uh, films and series are produced in, co in international co-productions um, today. So I think that's something we should just cherish and also uh, highlight as one of the main features, I think of the media program and why the courses that uh, the three of you uh, put on offer have been supported by the Creative Europe program. It really is about building this international network throughout the value chain. Um, as well. And I'm very excited to see this new creative simulation technologies and course that um, you have teased. So keeping our fingers crossed for the funding and, um, exactly. and it's very exciting um, to see uh, something new also in terms of technology that will be on offer in, at the European level. I think that's um, great. Uh, there's another question in the chat too, actually. One is how um, you apply for the scholarship. So I guess that also means at what stage, I guess it's after selection. And for ASF, uh, the course is four times two weeks across six months. Uh, how exactly is that? Uh, what does that look like? So uh, would you live in Denmark for six months or travel back home each time uh, until the course uh, ends? So yeah, how does it work in practice? Mm -hmm. Good questions. So first, the scholarships, uh, when you apply to the course itself, you would also apply uh, for a scholarship. And then they, and the, that, that doesn't mean that, you know, if you don't, if you're accepted to the course, but you don't get the scholarship, then you're not committed to taking part, then you can also, of course, uh, you have to confirm your participation afterwards. So it's normally in the same, uh, you know, there are different courses, of course, but there is in the same uh, Doing the same selection, and so and we have moved away. We used to have a separate uh, scholarship form to to fill out, but now uh, I think across all of them, they're just in that same um, form. Regarding ASF, um, so 
like if you're from 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 uh, from Holland, you would be traveling first to uh, let's see where the first one is. I think it's the Film Academy Basen Wurzenberg in Germany. So you travel there, you stay uh, two weeks there, and then you travel back to Holland. And then uh, that's in uh, October. Then in November, you'll be taking another trip uh, to Mumbai and staying two weeks there and then traveling back home. And then after Christmas, we have uh, a nice trip to uh, Vibor in January for two weeks, and then you travel home. And, and, and then the, the, the course ends uh, with a pitch session, you know, two weeks and a pitch session in, in Paris. Um, and that's why, why I mentioned this thing with the fee. I thought it was really amazing that you can actually just stay home and then you get all these uh, travels uh, covered in the fee. I hope that that's clear. Maybe I could add something also on the scholarships. Um, just for those of you uh, looking at this, just remember that uh, if you're also asking for a grant, for example, from your funding institute, national public fund uh, or another national body, often you have to apply before you commit or you actually you should let them know as quickly as possible to make sure that you have a commitment from them before you make your commitment um, on the course. So I guess a good piece of advice is to start thinking about this as indeed as early as possible. And uh, if you require additional funding to try and find, identify those sources uh, nationally as quickly as possible and check what the requirements are to make sure uh, you, you don't miss uh, the boat um, uh, on that. I don't see any other questions, uh, but of course, uh, all of our speakers will uh, be available by uh, email or maybe even uh, if, if you want to give them a call uh, after this uh, session or if you have questions at a later stage. Um, so uh, I will just hand back the floor to my colleagues in the Netherlands uh, and then some closing words. And I thank you from Luxembourg for uh, attending today. Over to you, Emma. Thank you, Carol. Uh, well, first of all, a big, big thank you to Per, Yurai and Anik. Uh, I thought it was very insightful and interesting. So I hope for the participants as well. Uh, you have such rich programs. Uh, you kind of want to work in animation now <laughs> um, uh, just to be able to do these courses. Sounds really interesting. Um, just some closing remarks before I hand the word to Kaboom again. Um, these training initiatives are only three of around 60 training initiatives that are media supported. So if you are interested to learn about other ones, you can also contact your local desks to learn about those. I'll put all kinds of links in the chat so you can, uh, you can find different trainings and contact details of your own desk and of course our desk as well. And please also sign up to our newsletter uh, if you are either in the Netherlands to the Descanel newsletter or to the one in Luxembourg or others. I will also post those uh, in the chat to stay up to date on all, also the deadlines of training initiatives, but also, of course, the deadlines of the Creative Europe funding program as well. So uh, thank you very much. And I'll hand the digital mic over to uh, Martin from Kaboom again. Thanks very much, Emma. I just wanted to thank Carol also for hosting this so nicely and keeping everything hey, within the time limit, which is always uh, a difficult enough thing to do. Um, so it was very nice. And indeed, also, I really uh, like seeing these three different places uh, and seeing them presented. And it's nice to see that they share so much, but there's also such diversity uh, across Europe, right, in these different uh, different projects. Um, I just would like to uh, remind you at the very end uh, that uh, originally this uh, whole program today came out of our industry days, and we will be having industry days again at Kaboom 2022, and those are on the 28th and the 29th of March. They'll be in Utrecht, the HKU. Uh, at the Art Academy, but they'll also be available online. So you can also participate digitally and we'll put more info on that on our website, uh, more to start of the next, uh, next year. And after that, there's of course also an audience part of the festival, which is in Amsterdam uh, from the 31st of March until the 3rd of April. Also partially online, but hopefully of course also as much as possible in the cinema. And um, for now, um, I think uh, this wraps it up. 
uh, for today. Thanks very much for everybody for being here today and making this a really nice place uh, to learn about different opportunities within Europe. Uh, and I think those are the closing words. Thank you very much, all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you very much. Thanks for inviting us. Bye. <laughs>